Hi, and welcome back to Power Electronics. And in this video segment, we're going to look at computing the Fourier series and total harmonic distortion of a modified sine wave. We'll also look at the RMS value. So here's an overview. First, we're going to uh, start with the RMS value of the modified sine wave. Then we're going to review the Fourier series expansion of a periodic signal. Um, while I say I'm going to derive the Fourier series of the modified sine wave, it's a fairly long derivation, and I think we'll save that for our in-class session to do that derivation. Uh, then we're going to step over and, and define the total harmonic distortion, and then we'll obtain an equation for the total harmonic distortion of the modified sine wave. Here we have a modified sine wave, and recall with a modified sine wave we have an angle alpha at which it starts at zero up to that point, and then we jump up, and I have it normalized to one, but this top height is VDC, our, our DC supply voltage, and right before 180 degrees or a half cycle, we turn the wave off and come back to zero, and we stay at zero, and again, we, we stay there for, there's alpha, and this portion is also alpha for another, and then we drop down for, to minus VDC, and again, I have it normalized to minus one, and we come back up. And I'm showing this uh, of our alpha in degrees, but if we wanted to, we could also place our conduction angle in radians, and this would be two pi radians, and 180 degrees would be pi. We can compute the RMS, and let's assume that that value is VDC, and this value down here is minus VDC. We can find the root mean squared value of our modified sine function by squaring our voltage. And we see it'll go all the way up to VDC squared during that conduction period. And for the for the period between 180 degrees and 360 degrees, when we square a negative number, it is also positive. And so we really only need to find the average between 0 and 180 degrees. And recall that angle is alpha, and this angle is also alpha in there. And so our total area to find the average is equal to, this is... 180 degrees minus 2 alpha, that's its base, times its height, which is VDC squared. And we're going to take this, and, and that's our area, which is our integral, and we're going to divide our integral by the total, total time at which we're looking at, and we're in angles, not necessarily time, and that's 180 degrees. So we obtain an equation for the voltage squared, and that voltage squared is VDC quantity squared times, and I'm going to simplify the math, 1 minus alpha over 90 degrees. And finally, to find the root mean square, we're going to take the square root of that, and I'll, I'll write that over here. And so our RMS value for a modified sine wave is VDC times the square root of 1 minus alpha divided by 90 degrees. If we are in radians, this would equal VDC times the square root of 1 minus alpha all over pi divided by 2. So either one works. This one's for degrees, and this one's if we're expressing alpha in radians. Now let's talk about the Fourier series. The Fourier series analysis, and I'm going to, to write down the Fourier series in a trigonometric function. If we have a periodic wave, and here we have a periodic voltage, we can always write a periodic voltage as the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of harmonically related sinusoids. So we have an an cosine n omega naught t plus bn sine n omega naught t. Where an 
uh, are the harm are, are the harmonics. A one and B one are called the fundamental harmonics. A zero is our DC component. And you see on our modified sine wave, our DC value A0 is equal to zero. Recall from your signals class that if the function is an odd value function, the A ends will equal zero. And an odd function is one where V of T or V of minus T is equal to minus V of T. It has symmetry about the diagonal axis. And for even functions, our B ends are zero. In the modified sine wave, we have it set up such that our B ends are going to have a value and our A ends are equal to zero. And this is, this is set up as an odd function. Another form of the Fourier series is A0 plus a summation from n equal 1 to infinity, C sub n cosine n omega naught t plus theta sub n, where C sub n is equal to the square root of a n squared plus b n squared, and theta n is equal to the inverse tangent of a of b n divided by a n again that's just a different form of the Fourier series the Fourier series and the coefficients tell us what the harmonic content is of a sign of, of the of the periodic waveform um, if we have a pure sign a pure sign function all of the coefficients except b1 are equal to zero. B1 is the only non-zero term for a pure sine wave. For a pure cosine wave, A1 is the only term that is non-equal to zero and the rest are all equal to zero. We can find the Fourier series coefficients from the following equation. I'm going to go over the derivation for the modified sine wave during our interactive session. The, 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 the values of the coefficients for the modified sine wave are Bn is equal to 4 Vdc cosine n alpha all over n pi for n equal to 1, 3, 5, 7, all odd values. And then for the even values, b sub n is equal to 0. So these are the Fourier series coefficients for the modified sine wave as a function of our angle alpha. You can see that if alpha is equal to 0 degrees, we have a a square wave, a symmetrical square wave, and it has coefficients for VDC all over n pi. And if you go and look up a Fourier series table, you'll often see that the, the square wave in the Fourier series. So this is a probably equation you want to write down in your notes. The total harmonic distortion is defined as the power in the non-fundamental harmonics all divided by the power in the fundamental harmonic and we take the square root of that so as an example as it relates to the Fourier series the power in our fundamental harmonic which is in the denominator, 
is A1 squared. It's, it's magnitude squared divided by 2 plus B1 squared divided by 2. So the power in the cosine and the power in the sine. That's our power in our fundamental. And then the power in the non-fundamental is going to be for the second harmonic, the third harmonic, the fourth harmonic. So I will write it as a summation. n equal 2 to infinity, a sub n plus b sub n. We're going to square both of those and divide those by 2. As you see, the 2 cancels out. Oh, we got to take a square root of all that. The 2 cancels out. And we're left with the total harmonic distortion is equal to the square root of the sum n equal to to infinity a n squared plus b n squared all over a one squared plus b one squared. Oftentimes, we'll multiply this by 100% to represent the total harmonic distortion in percentage. We can also find the total harmonic distortion by looking at the total power in the signal minus the power in the fundamental all divided by the power in the fundamental. And we'll take the square root of that. And again, we can multiply that by 100% to represent this in a percentage. Now we can compute the total harmonic distortion for the modified sine wave. I'm going to use the equation of total power minus power in the fundamental, all divided by the power in the fundamental. If we look at the total power, it's going to be our VRMS quantity squared minus the power in the fundamental. And the power in the fundamental is 4 VDC all over pi times cosine alpha and that whole quantity squared. The v, all, all divided by power in the fundamental is 4 VDC all over pi cosine alpha quantity squared. Recall our RMS value was equal to VDC times the square root of one minus alpha over 90 degrees. So the RMS value squared is VDC squared times one minus alpha divided by 90 degrees. We can plug this value in for VRMS and we obtain VDC squared times one minus alpha over 90 degrees minus four VDC quantity squared, the four squared, we have a cosine squared alpha all over pi squared divided by 4 squared VDC squared over pi squared cosine squared alpha. We see the VDCs cancel out and we'll have 1 minus alpha over 90 degrees all divided by 16 divided by pi squared cosine squared alpha minus 1. And then finally, we have to take the square root of that. And so right there, that is your THD for a modified sine wave. Again, you might want to write that one down. And uh, if you do the calculations with alpha equal to zero, the total harmonic distortion for a square wave that's not modified, again, that's where an alpha is equal to zero degrees, is about 46%. So let's review some of the key points. Um, we've reviewed this Fourier series expansion for a periodic signal. 
we defined the total harmonic distortion, and that was the square root of the power in the uh, non-fundamental harmonics over the power in the fundamental. We applied the Fourier series to the modified sine wave, and we obtained the coefficients uh, for the Fourier series, which are the coefficients of your harmonics, and those were Bn equal to 4Vdc divided by pi, cosine n alpha, and I need an n down here. Those were the coefficients. And then finally, we obtained an equation for the RMS value of our modified sine wave. That was equal to Vdc times the square root of one minus alpha over 90 degrees, or two pi if we're working in radians. And finally, we obtained an equation for the total harmonic distortion of the modified sine wave. Thanks for watching.